Are you curious about adding graphics to your virtual meetings and presentations? Whether you simply want to have a starting soon countdown, or maybe you want to have an animated sidebar, or perhaps you just want to have a keyword at the bottom of the screen. Having these graphics not only helps you to stand out because many people don't do this, it also gives you some structure to your call and it can help to reinforce the message you are trying to send. But there are some things I think that you should know. <laughs> and I kind of wish that I knew these things when I recorded this. Just over two years ago, I shared about using a virtual camera, adding graphics to Zoom, but there was some information I was missing. And if I could go back in time, I would definitely change it. So that's what I'm trying to remedy today. We are going to talk about what do you need to know when you're adding graphics to your virtual calls, whether you are using Zoom, Teams, or another web conferencing software. Really quickly, let's go over how you can add graphics, and that is using a virtual camera. In order to add a virtual camera to your web conferencing software, you are going to need something like OBS Studio, open broadcasting software, which is free and works on Mac or Windows. Or you can use something like Ecamm Live, which is what I use the most. This is for Mac only, and it is a paid subscription. If you are just getting started, OBS works well. There's a bit of a learning curve, but I've got some resources for how to set up and use OBS. The first thing you should know with OBS, this is an example, this is live on my computer, is that I've got three scenes set up. You can see over here to the far left, I have main camera, I also have a scene called a lower third, and I have a scene called sidebar. These are graphics that I have added. I've set up these scenes, and I won't get into those details today, but this allows me to have different scenes that I can flip through. I also wanna make sure over here on the right controls that my virtual camera is turned on. What will happen when it's turned on is that when you go to either Zoom or Teams, you'll actually see OBS virtual camera or Ecamm Live virtual camera in your list of cameras. So instead of choosing your camera as you normally would, you choose OBS virtual camera. Now, when we come into the Zoom meeting, I am feeding OBS into Zoom and I can change between scenes. So I can show the graphics that I've set up in OBS and I can just go back to my regular main camera view. This is the essence of how it works. Instead of choosing my regular camera, I am choosing instead OBS Studio where I have my graphics. So hopefully that gives you an overview of how it actually works. But what do you need to know about adding graphics? Well, the first one, I just have to be honest, not all computers are created equal, and it's possible that your computer is not powerful enough to actually run a virtual camera. You would have to be running the streaming software and your web conferencing software at the same time, and you might need to have other things open as well. Some computers are just not strong enough to be able to do this. You'll know pretty quickly if it's very choppy, laggy, you might be able to get away with some really simple animations or simple overlays, but start really simple and see how that goes. If you are really interested in having graphics in your virtual calls, I do think it is worthwhile to upgrade to a more powerful computer. The next thing is video quality or resolution. This is, this is so important. If this is the only thing you take away, please, please pay attention to this one. You might have a great quality scene set up. You might have great quality graphics, but when you bring them into your Zoom or Teams or whatever you are using for your web conferencing, that quality is going to be the limiting factor. So if the video quality on Zoom, Teams, etc., is low, then it's going to be low quality, low resolution. That means it might look blurry to other people on the other side. You wanna be able to check what is the quality of the video I am sending out? For example, here in the settings for Zoom, I can see that if I open my preferences and I click on settings in the sidebar and then click on video, I can tell that this resolution in this example was I was sending 1280 by 720. This is because I actually requested 720. If you have a paid Zoom plan, please, please, please request higher resolution. If you are on the professional plan, like a single user such as myself, you can request up to 720. If you're on a business or education plan, you can request up to 1080. And that makes a world of difference. You do not wanna add graphics on a really low quality, really low resolution. So please, please, please request it. 
If you are using Teams, you can check for your call health to see what it is that you are sending out. Now, there are some other things you should keep in mind regardless of the resolution. Always use large print, always use high contrast, and also avoid having fine details. I think this is just good practice in general so that it's accessible, people can see your graphics, you don't want people to be squinting. And if your resolution is not ideal, then these are all going to help you. Next, we wanna talk about camera mirroring. Sometimes people will panic a little when they add a graphic, they connect their virtual camera, and then they say, oh, everything's backwards, what is going on? Most video conferencing software will actually show your video mirrored, the way that you see yourself typically each day if you look in a mirror. But what's actually being sent out to everyone else is the correct way. This is a screenshot that I took from Microsoft Teams where I'm clearly backwards. My camera is mirrored, but what is going out to the audience is not the mirrored look. That's just for your own view, not for everyone else. But if you are able, you can actually turn off camera mirroring and it works for most software, but not all. And even for Microsoft Teams, I think because I'm on a Mac, I can't turn off camera mirroring, which is just a little bit odd. The next one is the aspect ratio. If you are in something like Zoom, you're gonna have the rectangle and it's going to stay the rectangular shape. It will be that way the whole time, even if you're little or you're big. However, other programs like Microsoft Teams are dynamic and they change the aspect ratio. So I might start as a rectangle and then I might turn into a square. And let's say I had this graphic right now in Teams, I might have the word aspect, maybe part of ratio cut off if it has changed my camera into a different shape. So you want to take that into account if you were thinking about adding graphics. There frankly just might be some programs where it's not a great idea to have graphics, or maybe you can keep them centered at the bottom of the screen, but you should be paying attention to the aspect ratio of your video when you are adding graphics. Next, we wanna talk about virtual backgrounds. I'm sorry if you love your virtual background, if you love to blur or you just hate showing your background. Virtual cameras and virtual backgrounds don't get along. They fight with each other. That is because the web conference software is trying to look for the person. It's trying to isolate the subject and remove everything else. So if we take a look at this screenshot where I put on the blur effect, you can see that it clearly blurred my background, but it also blurred the words, which are also not, they're mirrored still. But this is an example where that's no good. That is, that is completely defeating the purpose of having the graphics. If you truly wanna use graphics on your calls, but you cannot stand the idea of having your background, then I recommend you buy an actual green screen because you can set up your virtual background in OBS or Ecamm, and then you are bringing in both the virtual background and your graphics and overlays, both using the virtual camera. Next, audio video lag. This one is worth knowing if you have, <laughs> brought in your virtual camera, there is a chance that your audio and video might be out of sync. Let's look at an example right now where clearly my voice and my mouth are moving slightly different. It's, it's out of sync. This is not ideal and there could be a few things going on. One issue at play might be a sign that your computer is not powerful enough. That's one potential option. There are other signs if it's kind of jerky and other things are happening or your computer is slowing down that will also lean towards the idea that you need a more powerful computer. But that's not always the case. You can have a powerful computer and still have a lag. One of the things I recommend if you're using an external microphone is to try different ports. I know that has made a difference for me when I was setting up my virtual camera. So having your microphone try a few different ports, see if it makes a difference because it might. The other thing you can do is use software in order to add a delay and match your voice with the movement of your video. This is a little more complicated. I am not gonna teach that in this video, but there are ways to do that. So if you have a lag, don't doesn't mean you can't use graphics. It just might mean you have to be creative. You might have to add in an additional virtual microphone in addition to your virtual camera. The next one is to be able to control scene switching. It's it can be really professional and it can stand out and it can look great when you have graphics, but it's not so great if you are fumbling around with the controls. If you can't figure out how to switch scenes or you're staring at your screen and you're trying to figure out how do I get to the next one, 
that is just distracting. That's not professional at all. That is not impressive. That doesn't leave an impact or maybe it leaves the wrong one. There are a few options you have. One is that you can actually program keyboard shortcuts or hotkeys, and you can use your keyboard in order to change between scenes. Even some of the navigation keys like next or page down, depending on what software you're using, can also help you navigate. Another idea is software. For example, there are apps you can use on your phone or your tablet that you can program and you can switch between scenes. And then of course there are programmable keyboards or hardware that you can have on your desk. Personally, I'm a fan of the Stream Deck. I have a few videos on how to set those up, but that is how I control my scenes and how I switch between the different ones. The last thing I wanna say is test, test, and test some more. Please don't do this live for the first time in front of an audience, especially if there are stakes involved. <laughs> you wanna find out, can your computer handle this? Do you have lag? Is, there, is it in sync or not? What is the resolution that you are actually sending when you have your virtual camera hooked up to your video? Ideally, you want to actually test and record a call with at least two other people. I think that's a really good idea, both from Zoom. I know resolution starts to get worse as soon as you have at least two other people. And in something like Teams, where you start to have the shape change and the aspect ratio, that's another thing that you'll want to check out. Make sure that you record it. And if you have to run a longer meeting and you plan to use graphics, try to do a slightly longer test run to make sure that your computer can actually handle the length of the meeting in addition to just being able to handle the graphics. All of these things are gonna help set you up for success. And I hope this list has been helpful. I have in the description other resources for how to actually set up scenes, how to switch and control your scenes. All of these are down below, you can check them out. And if you do decide to use graphics, please let me know in the comments, how did it go? Did it help you to stand out and look more professional in your virtual meetings and presentations?